Good to know you're still yeah. watching The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to look at the papers now. And our guest to help make sense of this is public affairs analyst, Golaho Olojede. Thank you very much, uh, Golaho, for joining us this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, we'll start with the Guardian newspaper. The big one there has to do uh, with money, of course. Bitumen imports gulp 300 billion naira despite huge deposits in states. Uh, a couple of riders, uh, 42.74 billion metric tons of asphalt untapped. Nigeria loses 1 trillion naira to bad roads yearly. Ondo woos local foreign investors as Ogu joins Frey. Okay, those are some uh, riders to that big one on bitumen imports. And then uh, there is the president there, that picture I reportage on your front page. Um, there are concerns over safety protocols as foreign flights resume. Additional returns as AFDB's chief executive. 19 killed in Zamfara, road crash. Matawale declares three-day mourning. And then uh, there are some other headlines for you um, from the Guardian newspaper. Over to you, Balaha. Which of these would you want to take on quickly? Um, I think it's, uh, it, it's worthy of note that we have bitumen in Nigeria. Huge deposits of bitumen on those states. I think, I think a couple of other states also have some bitumen. And to note that we spend 300 billion naira importing a product that is right under the soil in Nigeria is, is, is disheartening. Do you know that a whole lot of states in Nigeria do not even have an annual net revenue of up to 100 billion naira? And here we are as a country, we spend 300 billion importing a product that is under the soil in Nigeria. It's something that you get out of thinking. That space of uh, uh, um, solid minerals, we have not done very well in at all. If we ask how much money we make from solid minerals today, it will be, it will be something that you, you want to close, close the book and wonder what kind of a country is that. Okay. So I, 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 when, when you think about the fact that we import palm oil, we import maize, we import refined petroleum products when we have the crude right here and we just refine, um, it, 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 it's an extension of the kind of nation we have become. A nation that just wants to, what an easy way out, sell the crude, get some money, share it, and then uh, everybody is happy. We, we, we need to change the way we, we think as, as a country. All right, uh, there is this one that I, I, I skipped. Uh, disquiet over Buhari's order for metering of 5 million Nigerians. But uh, before I take your thoughts on that, I want you to speak on the return of Adeshina as the AFDB's uh, president. A lovely, lovely news. Um, probably one of the best news of, of the week. Yeah. Uh, not only was it returned as the a, as a president of, of that uh, institution, he had 100% votes of the Board of Governors. And that includes even the votes of representatives of the nations that have asked for his pro. So everybody is on board, 100% support, and additional is elected for another five years. We all pray that he will be able to deliver Africa onto its next level in terms of, uh, of a developmental uh, uh, project and, and, and other stuff. All right. out of the hole here. So th there's been some um, concerns over the metering issue. What's your take on it? The order, is it feasible? I mean, we have issue with power generation in the first instance. Sustaining it is a problem. Um, the infrastructure is an issue. So many things uh, that goes with it. Is it feasible, really? There's nothing that is impossible about metering. Um, the concern about this particular news item is the fact that it is not the first time that we're hearing it. Uh, more than a few occasions, we've had pronouncements along the same line. Oh, we're going to do mass metering of the people. It just never happened. 
But I think we are now at that junction where we must make it happen. Why? The reason is because there's going to be the, the implementation of the multi-year tariff order starting in September. By September 1, there's likely to be, I, I don't think I should use the word likely, there will be an increase in electricity tariff in Nigeria as a precondition to a, to a World Bank loan. So if you're going to increase the tariff, it is just fair enough that people should actually be paying for what they consume. So we are at that junction where it has become more important than ever that the metering happens. All right. So I, I want to believe that everything that is required to make it happen this time, considering the effect it will have on the pockets of Nigerians in this time. It is, this is a season where Nigerians need more disposable income. When they are able to spend, that will help us to get out of a recession. If they are not able to spend because everything is lost to uh, uh, arbitrary bills, um, it, it won't happen anyway. All right. Let's take a look at the next paper that we have. We have uh, the Nation newspaper on your screen now. Uh, government float survival fund for teachers, artisans, others. Uh, Shiba and Joe hints on revival plan at NBA Confab. Why our economy is bankrupt by Mogalu. Uh, those are some for you. And then the update on Edo Ondo 2020. It's also there. Something on INEC ready for polls, says Yakubu. Uh, I think that if you've been following the news, um, the breakfast this morning, uh, you would see uh, that there was a visit to the Oba of Benin by the chairman of INEC. And then, of course, um, uh, Jegede criticizes governor's policies. Izeyamu promises to create jobs through agri. agri uh, let's go to the top of the paper. Uh, you can find details of that, uh, those uh, stories on page three of the paper. Uh, Maka Inde gets assembly's nod on 800 million naira loan. Half year reports Lagos met 81% revenue target. Blasphemy, Ganduje to sign singer's death sentence. I, I want us to start with that particular story because there's been missed reaction over that verdict um, on the singer's uh, life. What, what is your, what's your thinking on that? Um, uh, the, the gentleman has been sentenced, but he has a right of appeal uh, within a 30-day framework. Uh, does he want to appeal? Uh, could the constraint be money to pay the lawyers or whatever? Uh, whatever may be the case, I feel this gentleman to appeal uh, the death sentence that has been passed on him. Uh, because unfortunately, and unfortunately, um, the, it, it is a law in, in Canada. And if he doesn't appeal this case, it, it, and the governor signs the death one, he might actually be killed. And that, that is the reality. So if, if, if whatever the re if is his resources, that is his problem uh, by, for not uh, appealing the case, um, there, there should be Nigerians, even, even of Kano origin, who are willing um, to fund that kind of an appeal to ensure that the man has um, a fair representation and is listened to at a higher level than the court that has sentenced him. Otherwise, um, he, he, he might end up being killed. And that would not go well for the image of Nigeria everywhere where that news goes to. All right, let's look at the big one. Government uh, float survival funds for teachers, artisans, uh, orders. Um, we, we also heard in the news that um, um, there's something, some palliative for transporters as well. Um, Oshibanjo, that's one of the writers to that headline. Oshibanjo hints on revival plan at NBA Confab. Um, and then um, I did highlight the Morgan Lusain uh, why explaining why our economy is a bankrupt. So I, I want you to speak on the funds, the survival fund for teachers and artisans. Um, are we going to, are they going to get it? Um, you know, when, when, I, when I spoke about uh, uh, the metering problem the other time, I had mentioned the fact that putting money in the hands of people, making disposable income available to the people is very critical to getting us out of the economic uh, problems that we currently have. 
And part of what this initiative will do is to put money in the hands of all these categories of beneficiaries. So you have the teachers, they have been private school teachers, especially because public school teachers were still being paid by their uh, government. But look at the private school teachers that have not earned income since March, except maybe for those who are earning some little, little things from all these uh, virtual classes. And, 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 and we need to ensure that all those loss of income, we, we provide a little bit of cushion. It, it will not be a hundred percent, whatever. But that will count. When the money is put in the hands of these people, they spend, as they spend, they stimulate production and provision of services. And these are the things that will get the nation out of the dollar. So it's a step in the right direction. How we implement this? It's another issue entirely. It might be easy to get a record of teachers, for example. I am not sure how effective it will be uh, getting a record of artisans and all the other people that we want to pay these palliatives. So we, want, we have to watch that next. But at the same time, it's a worthy project. It's part of the way to get this economy back on track. All right, um, let's see what the other um, issues are here on the paper this morning. And that is the nation, PTF Lagos passes COVID-19 pick. That is another one for you. And then ousted Mali President Freed, Messi seeks to pair Nema, Nema, that's another one, CBN to uh, restart weekly dollar sales to VDCs. Um, I want you to pick on any of these and speak on it quickly before we go to uh, the next paper. Um, it's, it's, it's good news to know that Lagos has uh, already passed its peak, so we are on a decline as far as uh, COVID is concerned. Uh, my worry, though, is that I hope we will not uh, drop the gas. Uh, because by virtue of this news, and then all the things that we have been doing that has helped us um, get up to this to, to, to the current situation, uh, we will now drop them. Uh, we might now encounter a, a surge or, or a second uh, uh, increase. Uh, it, will, it will not be good for us. So the, the, the uh, state government has a role to continue to enforce existing rule, educate the people continuously on what we need to do with emphasis on the fact that the virus is still around. All right, let's go to the punch and see what the big one is. FG, National Assembly, bringing rejected water bill through the back door, says Shoinka. Bill will give President mm -hmm. absolute control of water resources across Nigeria, playwright. FG wants to acquire water resources for foreigners, or Haneze. It will get Nigeria, it will set Nigeria on fire, says Middle Belt. That's uh, some, some of the scream out there for you. FG planning to pay private school teachers artisans. That was the one that the Nation newspaper went with as the biggie. Government shifts international flights resumption to September 5. Buhari others hail Adishina on re-election as AFDB president. Fan laments 95% drop in revenue begins new charges. Let's talk about the water bill. There's, somebody alluded to this a couple of um, days ago and people just waved it aside. What, what is this one? Noble Laureate is now out speaking about it. Um, this water bill um, emerged, I think, uh, about two years ago, in 2018, there about. And uh, Nigerians rejected it by, you know, popular opinion. And uh, they, it was dropped. Now it is back on the table. What I think we need to avoid is a situation that looks like uh, Section 839 of the new cap in which after the law has been passed and assented to by the president, uh, we are now moting issues of amendment. As far as this water bill is concerned, the National Assembly was a duty to let us contribute to it. So let there be stakeholder involvement, call open session, invite stakeholders, let a public debate into that bill before it can be passed. 
Um, if possible, let the deliberations even be open on the TV. We want to see what the stakeholders are saying and um, all the emerging issues and, 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 and the discussion around the bill before it is finally passed. If we're able to do this, I believe it will be better for us. There is no doubt that we need, uh, what I would say, an improvement in our water resources management environment. So there might actually be need for something, uh, some sort of legislation around managing our water resources. But we have to be careful that it is what will do us good that is in the bill and not a backdoor hijacking of water resources that may not benefit the population. Or rather, we will increase insecurity. Good economic insecurity and, and, and the real normal insecurity in the country. So let's have an open discussion on this, on this bill before it is finally accepted. All right, uh, let's uh, just uh, recap some of the headlines still on the Punch newspaper. Um, there is a, a scene there um, in, from South Africa, protests, so that's it on your screen. Um, uh, we also have the um, recap of the death sentence for the singer over blasphemy. Uh, we also have gunmen kill man, uh, steal motorcycle crash in Oshun. And then Abuja policemen arrest extort surveyor in Lagos. Uh, moving on now to uh, the business day. Uh, business day has logistics firms squeezed by multiple taxes in Lagos. State says taking steps to read roads of touts. Uh, declining market turnover questions whereabouts of institutional investors. And then uh, we have um, inside the paper, Zainab Ahmed makes the Minister of Finance of the Year award that's um you know compliment for work done i guess over to you the big one uh, logistics firm squeezed by multiple taxes we we had a guest here yesterday actually um wow. that it's a youth that was saying she was about to start up a business and the the bottlenecks to starting off that business was something else and that the taxes are really a lot uh, what, what's your take on this one now that the business day is bringing it to the fore again it's funny that on one side, we're trying to provide palliatives to uh, transporters. On the other side, there are issues of multiple taxations um, affect, affecting that same in the industry. Um, we, we have to harmonize our approach to some of these things. The, the, the problem with this season is that even planned taxation uh, uh, initiatives might have to be delayed slightly. So if, if I had planned before that by June of this year, I, I, I was going to increase taxation in certain areas, by virtue of the nature of I mean, what COVID has brought, I, I am constrained. I have to delay the implementation of that kind of a taxation. And the reason is because of what I said earlier. It is important that people have more disposable income at this time and are able to spend to get us out of recession. So when you slam them with taxes, you take away that income and you keep the economy low and, 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 and we will stay longer in the recession. So all this issue of multiple taxations, uh, if, 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 if it has to do with uh, the introduction of new taxes, the government must revisit those things and see how it can make it easier on the sector so that people can have more money to spend in this season. All, All right. those are our tax plans. We can actually bring them back later on. But let this season pass. All right. Uh, the other one there is the declining market turnover questions whereabouts of institutional investors. It has a rider as average daily volume drops. Uh, to 33.92% from 33.92% to 290.77. While uh, that might, might happen on the stock exchange, when you go to other part of the capital market, it is the opposite that is actually happening. In the month of June, the bond offers by the federal government were oversubscribed by about 300%. And the implication of that is that there is so much money chasing so few investments. 
The same thing happened in July. It was oversubscribed by like another over 300 percent again. So we still have that situation in which there is so much money in the system chasing so few investment opportunities or instruments in the market. So what might have, might have happened is that you have some sort of realignment in which um, money or investment move from a type of instrument into another type of instrument. So it's, it's, it's not an all bad situation right now. But what I foresee is that foreign investors uh, who are able to pull out are pull, are will pull out in the, in the, in the, in the scene. And all that's right. what we have to do with the uh, forex situation. Uh, we um, hope this is something that requires a close watch. watch by the managers of mine. We hope they don't pull out too much. So we still have something um, left behind to grow our economy. Thank you so much, Ngbalaho Oloje, the public affairs analyst, for your time. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. You take care now. And that's it on Off the Press still.